Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is open up MATLAB. So if you go to start, type in MATLAB, and you'll be able to run your particular version. Now the one that I've got is uh, MATLAB release 2017A, so it's pretty up to date. Uh, I've already got it open, so uh, I'll just assume that you've run that uh, executable. Now to get Simscape to uh, work, you just need to type in the word Simscape. And it'll bring up a um, kind of like a library uh, of different uh, features that you have installed, uh, depending on your licensing. Now, to create a Simscape model, we need to just click on the icon here that has create a Simulink model. So we click that, and we'll just drag it over to the side. Now, the Basic building blocks for a Simscape model require that we have some type of um, solver configuration. So if we have a look in utilities, you'll see that there's a solver configuration. So we can drag this across onto our Simulink model and yeah, it'll be ready to use. Uh, now, the subtle difference between Simulink models and Simscape models is that a Simscape model makes use of what's termed physical signals and a Simulink signal isn't compatible with a uh, physical signal. So what you need is some type of conversion block. So what you can have is a physical uh, signal to Simulink converter and a Simulink to physical signal converter. So we can drag either of those blocks on. So this is good for, so the Simulink to physical signal converter is good for taking a signal from Simulink and turning that into some type of input to our physical system. So imagine you had an electrical uh, circuit. You could give a step input through a uh, Simulink to physical signal converter, and then that would be turned into, say, a voltage, which you could use as an input to a um, voltage-controlled uh, source. Uh, now, if you wanted to make measurements from our physical signal, uh, system and then put that out to a scope, well we'd need to use a physical signal to simulate your converter so we can drag that across. Now those are basically all the, the minimum working example kind of building blocks that we would need. Uh, so let's have a look at creating a simple uh, mechanical system for example. So we can come back and use our foundation library and uh, we can have a look here at our mechanical uh, block and that opens up uh, a series of um, subsystems and we see that we've got mechanical sensors, mechanical sources, mechanisms, rotational elements and translational elements. So let's look at creating a simple spring mass uh, damper system. So we know we need uh, a translational system for example is going to have a mass, it's going to have a uh, damper it's going to have some type of spring. There we go. And we're going to have some type of reference that displacement can be measured with respect to, kind of like ground in a circuit. So here is our reference. And we need to have some type of force being applied to the mass. So if we go back to our mechanical block, we see that. Uh, there is a mechanical source, so if we double click on that, we'll see that we can get an ideal angular velocity source, an ideal force source, torque source, and translational velocity source. So here we're just going to use an ideal forced, uh, an ideal force source, and drag it onto our system. So we've got all of our uh, components that we really need to get started. So uh, all we need is to start to connect them together. So we can draw the force and the mass is going to be driven by the force and we're going to have our force out there. Our mass is going to be connected to our components like so and we'll just drag it around and conserve everything. So there we go. So we'll connect that. So now, if I just tidy it up a wee bit, We've got a mass connected to a spring and a damper, and we just need to connect our salt config in that way. And so we've got now a complete mechanical system. But at the moment, no force is being provided to it because we're waiting for a 
a physical signal to be provided as an input to this ideal force source block. So what we do is we just do this. So now we have a signal that's being provided as an input. And so we might go and look up in the uh, Simulink uh, library browser and just search for, say, a step and drag that step then onto our model and connect it like that. So now we'll have a step input in terms of force being applied to this mass, uh, which is connected to these spring mass dampers. Now we need to be able to measure the translation of the mass. So if we go back to our Simscape library and look for mechanical sensors, we can see that there's sensors and uh, one we're going to look for is an ideal translational motion sensor. So we click that and drag it onto our block. I'll just uh, move things around a wee bit. So here we go. So we're going to measure the mass's displacement relative to the mechanical tr uh, translational reference. And we're going to take out the position so we're taking a physical signal and turning it into a simulink signal and we're going to look for a in the simulink library browser for a scope and this will help us uh, visualize the um, output All right, sorry scope come on there we go all right so we're going to put a scope here on our diagram and that's it so now we've created a uh, spring mass damper system using the Simscape uh, fundamental library. And uh, let's see what we get. So we're going to provide a step of magnitude 1 at times equal to 1. We've got a mass equal to 1 kilogram. We've got a translational spring with 1 kilonewtons per meter. A translational damper of 100 newtons. Uh, meters per second. So we should get something like a, a series of oscillations in our, our transient response before it eventually decays to some steady state value. Uh, so what we can do is just open up our scope, drag it off to the side, click run, and well because the system so heavily damped we've ended up with a uh, first order like response. So we can go and tweak some of the values and let's say we set everything to uh, 1. So we say we have a spring rate of 1 newton per meter, we have 1 newton per meter per second, and 1 kilo, and 1 newton. So we run that, let's see what happens. So we do get some oscillation. So in this case, we've got a underdamped system response, uh, which eventually would uh, tend towards some steady state value as time tends towards infinity. So let's just rerun that and have a look. And that's it. So we've got some overshoot, and eventually it'll decay down to some steady state value uh, close to 10 seconds. So if we just reduce our simulation time to 15 seconds, rerun it, there we go. So we've got the steady state response for a spring mace uh, damper system uh, as modeled using the um, Simscape fundamental library. Now, if we wanted to create a uh, linear model of the system, what we can do is add in some linear analysis points. So what we can do is right click on the Simulink signal and go to linear analysis points and add in a input perturbation uh, point here and then on our output signal we can add in a uh, we're looking for it, output measurement. So we click that and we go to analysis control design, linear analysis. It'll bring up another window that uh, we can provide the step input to. And it'll calculate the step response, which is similar to what we've already seen here in this window. So uh, now that we've got a linear model, which will be a state space representation, uh, we can actually convert that into a transfer function. So if we just move into our workspace, and come to our uh, MATLAB workspace. We can just simply use the uh, function uh, tf and then uh, substitute into it a uh, state space model 
and it will give us a transfer function. So uh, we should expect that the general form of the system is going to be something like 1 over s squared plus s plus 1, keeping in mind that m is 1, uh, k is 1, and uh, d is 1. So that's it. We've created a, a um, spring mass uh, damper model using Simscape's fundamental library. We see that we get a transient response from the simulation, and the linearized model is exactly what we would get if we worked out the linear model by hand. So hopefully that's given you uh, an introduction to how you might model a uh, simple system using the uh, Simscape uh, library in MATLAB.